First of all, my name is Gordon A. Kastner. I was born in the state of New Jersey, in Englewood, New Jersey. Then at the age of five, my father and mother separated, and my, and my father took me down to Cuba because my grandfather was an engineer in the canal zone. And when the canal zone finished, there was a depression in the United States. So one of his friends tell him, Mr. Kastner, why don't you come to, to Cuba and see if you like it because the, the, your country has problems. So he went over to Cuba and they promised to come away. And uh, he bought some farm and he started, he started with orange, in the orange grow, sugar cane and cattle. My grandfather, as far as I can know, his name is Duncan Kastner. He was born in the United States, but his, uh, my great great grandfather came from Germany. Tell me, your, so then your father was here when you were born, and I understand that he worked on the construction of the George Washington Bridge. Yes. So there's another iconic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my father was working on the Canucks in the, in the New Jersey side, 632 feet high in this side of New Jersey. Sometimes his job had to go across to the, you know, the other side of New York. Mm -hmm. And in that time, as my father used to tell me, the Hudson River was, the water was so clean, the shark used to come down by, under the bridge. And sometimes the worker would, would fall down to the water and they, the shark used to attack them. Well, the first time when I started there, I did not speak Spanish. So I had some of the, the friends of my father had kids and they, they, we used to hang together. And the only thing I can understand them is, is by signal. So one time they told me, like pointing like this and they said like this. So the way they were told me, I understood to go to that box and take the cover off. So I went to the box and took the cover off and it was a beehive that came all after me. But then, you know, I, I recuperated and then I started learning and then I was growing up and uh, the, the beekeeper used to come and bring the bees down to the farm where the army grows. And then I get, I get friendly with them and they used to work with them in the day at night time. And then I started to like it, and like it, and then, and then when I came back to the state, not right now, I have my, I have my own hives, you know. Uh, so uh, tell me, uh, before we come to the United States, how long in Cuba did you, um, did you do that, and uh, how long did it take you to learn everything? Well, I was there 15 during the 15 years. I went down to Faber, came back 20. And that whole time, you were you were working with bees. I was working bees and and in the farmland. Uh, you know, uh, as a farmer. What year did you come to the United States? I came back in, in the United States in 1952. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the smoker with a pine needle. The pine needle is make the smoke to make the, the bees quiet because the bees are all together in the, in the frames. And if I pull them, we, uh, as soon as they get there, they crush them. So I had to pull them so the bee goes down to the bottom so I can pull the conning horn out. And the one you see the sugar there because they are a new hive, so it had to be feed before the flower comes out in the field. So I take the, the top, the inner cover out. As you see now, I smoke it so the bee goes down. As you can see, so many bees in there. You see the bees now, they're going to come down. And now this is the honeycomb on the frame, as you can see. And they can see now, I, I tell you, how the bees are not aggressive. You see it right now? So many bees in there, and they're not aggressive, like people think. As you see now, they make the cone, and as you see inside, they, they put the nectar. And then after the nectar, the, the bees have processed it and make it honey, and then they, they cover it. As uh, let me see, there's another cover. As you see, the cover in here right now. They start it right. So now the thing is, you see it is all covered in the sun here. You see all the shine. They start producing the honey now. All these are new bee, new bees coming out. Each one of them it will come to be a bee, and each bee will, will last six weeks and then die because they get worn out from so much work. The bee has to go a hundred times to, to the field 
to come back to produce one spoon of honey. So I can control it. I have to put the, the, the smoke up. As you see, they're going down to get the protection from the bottom. So then, then the, the, this is the way the beekeeper can control to, to not to kill so many bees. And then I have to clean this up because they have to make it over again. So they don't have to work. I'm doing it now because a lot of them be, be taken out of the out of the honeycomb where they have been born. Now let me see if I got baby here. Now can you tell me a little something? There's this whole thing for many years, there's been something in the news about that the bees are dying, that they're having problems. Have you faced that problem? I'm facing out of 35 bees, honey bees, that have, uh, 35 hives that I had here in my, in my backyard. I only, by the, by between last year till now, I only have this three left. All are being died because they're pesticides. Too much pesticides and the, and the mite, they came from China. It, the, the mite is like a little, a little insect, like they, like they have them in the dogs, the, what they call in the dogs? Fleas. The flea, it's like a flea. Now, now you, you've been doing this something like 70 years, right? I'm doing this, I'm seven years old. Since you're seven, and how old are you now? 87. All right, so that means you've been doing it for 80 years. That's right. So when did this problem of the bees dying start? Where's that again? When, when did the problem start that you saw the bees dying and, and the mites and everything? How long ago? Oh, quite a few years back when they, when they brought bees from China. They brought the, they brought the mite into the United States. We never had it before. Mm -hmm. The queen is a, is a beautiful, longer, longer bee than the, than the other one. As you see this, they might, have, they might come a, a, a queen out of there. That's a queen cell. And then they start deciding that so many bees are, then they make a swarm. And they, they have to start looking for, for a, new, a new home. Try this one here are workers. They're taking care of the newborn and feeding the queen. Okay. And then when the, when the worker comes, they give that, the nectar to the workers inside and they produce, they take the water out of the nectar and produce the honey. The, the bee leaves only six weeks. That's it? And the reason, because they worn out, their wings burn out and their body worn out. To see them like this and the way the work they do is amazing. And without the bees, we human beings won't survive. Because the pollination, the wind don't do enough pollination to produce fruit and, and, and everything. Everything that's being growing in, in the ground. The way I work, I haven't changed. I do my own way. Some of the new beekeepers that do different ways, some they don't take care of it, and they lose it more than, than I do. Because, for example, when the new queen is born, and then they, they, they have two, two queens or three queens, they fight. And if it's three, one have to die, the other one decide to, to send the, to the, then they swarm, and they go out looking for another home. And then they have to go and find like a, another hive or, or a hole in the tree, and the, the, the scout has to clean it. When the, when the queen comes back, the, 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 let's call it the apartment has to be clean. If she don't like it, she stay up and say, no, you keep looking for another one. I don't like it. That's it. What about the bees from the time you were a little kid to now? Are all the bees all the same? They all, all the same. same. They behave the same? Or they have the only different, these are Italian bees. They have different kinds of bees, Russians and other kinds that are coming up, they're producing them more. But this, to my concern, this is the best working bees that I have. You imported that from Italy? No, no, they already imported here many, many years ago. But how do you know they're Italian? Do they wake up in the morning and say buongiorno? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, because of this, the, 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 the way they are, the, the size of the bee, the other bees are blacker. The Russian are the blackest, and the other kinds are different, different color. No, I'm just wondering, how, I mean, how do you know which one is from what country? I mean, they have a different, they have a they specific characteristic, or a specific taste, or they behave in a the, certain way? The behavior, 
this is this this bees are more friendly like like the African bee is deadly. They attack with a little noise, they attack right away. And they attack, you can follow them for a mile, they keep going. They kill a lot of people, especially the line man that goes up on up in the weeds to put the line across the country. Mm -hmm. So what is the what tell me, I know you I think you said a little bit earlier, but what is the enemy of these bees? When they go out there, what what is their enemy? What uh, can hurt them? The the hurt the bee the the bees enemy it mostly us. The weather and the birds, and colliding with 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 with, with the cars today, mm -hmm. because so many thousand, hundreds of thousands of miles of uh, earth is covered by asphalt, so they have to keep going further to find out where the where the honey where the where the flowers are okay. to produce the nectar and then become to be honey. In 1970, I started bringing bees here. Back here, yeah. this whole area. Do, do your neighbors ever say, um, uh, should we get a complaint from a neighbor? I never had any complaint yeah. because <laughs> it's legal to have bees yeah. in the backyard. The only thing, if, like here, to keep the bees going high where the patio is, where the people are, mm -hmm. they, got the, they got the long fence, high fence, so they have to come flying up. How many times in your life have you been stung by a bee? Uh, once in a while, like I was before, they come fly and they hit me. And they stay in that, but I keep going. This is a frame of honeycomb. They make the, the comb first, and then they have to fill it in. They, they, they are made out of wax. And then if you see little little holes there, the little the honeycombs that fill up with the nectar, and then they come to be honey, as you can see it now. And then you, uh, as you see that one, the other one, is gonna, you're going to see the difference in the color because they are, they are already new. New cone, as you see, it white, and they are more more full of the nectar than the other one. Pretty soon they fill completely, and then become to be as you can see. Look right here now. Look at the honey coming out. See, and then you look at it like this, and you taste it. How sweet it is! When I started, I had to put some some sugar on it to, to, because there was no honey during the winter, so they have to eat. So you feed them. I leave 70 pounds of honey in each hive for the winter, because the winter is very long. So then, sometime like when the when the, the the summer change, they eat all the honey. So I had to put some honey, and then I mix it with the, with the sugar, so they can survive. So the bees themselves, what they eat is all sweet. All sweet. It's very interesting. I, I'm glad you brought that up. That's something I didn't think about. What do they eat? They eat, you know, yeah. what do they eat? Nourish? They go after, you can be in a, in, a bar, in a barbecue and they can be coming up for your soda because it's sweet. How much time, how many hours every day do you work on this? Uh, two, three hours a day because you cannot work all the time together. You have to keep changing from one hive to another one so the bees don't get mad. So you have to let you ha every day you let the, let them out in the morning, right? I don't let them out. They are by yourself. They go out by themselves. Uh, as soon as soon the sun come out, they go out. And they know to come. And they come back. They by come. Themselves. They come back at sundown. You don't have to do anything. No. So now they they've already been out today and came back. They start coming back in the morning when I, all the hives live. I sit there and I can see all coming up when the sun comes up in the east. Yeah. You see all the little wings, hundreds yeah. of them going out, and others coming in. Because some of them, they don't make it during the night. Okay. So they stay in the tree. Oh. And as soon as early, they come back here. Do, when they go out, do they separate or do they stay in a swarm? No, they all, they all go separate. Okay, they all go separate looking for flowers? Looking for a patch of flowers. Like for example, they go to, to wildflowers, they're all together. So they all collect out of the same. But if it's a falfa and it's watermelon or it's pumpkin, they collect, they all, one group goes in there, all the groups of the other one. Okay. Have you ever heard, I mean, do you have any idea how far away they go every day? They go up maybe 20, 25 miles a day. Wow. They travel 50,000 50, miles in their lifetime. So they're coming in. The guard will let any bee comes in to deposit, they, they, they let them in. But if they come to rob, they try to keep them away. 
And if they're sick, they don't let them in. So they even have their own security? Yeah, of course they have security. Right now they're coming in from the field and they're coming with pollen. And they, you have to watch if every, when they see it like this, when it has the pollen. Yeah, I see that, I see it. Yeah. And what, the, the, the other ones are coming, the, the other ones are coming with nectar. Why is the pollen important? The pollen, because they have to feed the, the queen. The harvest all depends on nature about the flowers. When the flowers start coming in, the most the most the weather produced there with more flowers, so then they start coming and bring a lot of nectar, then produce a lot of honey. Right now, they, as you see, they will stop bringing it in. But then they have to fill it all up by, and then be by the, the middle of July, August, mostly August, when they already start falling, then you have that, then you start harvesting the honey. Then I put it in the, and I, I have to cut the, the, the edge off, and then I put it in the extractor, the honey come out, and I bring the, the honey, the comb back, so they can start filling it up again. I'm doing it because I retire, and during the summer I take care of my bees, and for me it's, it's the work that I keep me busy. And then in the winter time, in the winter time I'm a hunter, I hunt, because they already sleep, they already take, they, they already harvest it. Where do you go hunting? I go hunting for different places, different places of the world, all different states, Canada. Do you uh, do it here in New Jersey too? Yes, in New Jersey I go for whitetail and bear. In Pennsylvania I go for wild boar and elk. New Mexico for elk. Okay. Maine for bear. New Brunswick for moose. So you, you seem like somebody, you're living here in the middle of the crowded North Hudson, North Hudson County, but you seem like somebody who would prefer living like in one of those Alaska shows. Yeah. You know, what are you doing here in North Bergen still? Why haven't you retired to the mountains? Because I had this, this property here in 1960 and my wife used to love it. She passed away and I'm keeping that. So I, I made all this and she wanted it in her memory, all the, all the extra yard in that side. What makes your honey different than somebody else's honey? Is it the taste? Is it the quality? Is it, what, what, why is your honey it's, better than First of all, because I don't want to mix it. And second of all, it comes, it comes from the meadowland, different kinds of, of flowers in there. They make the taste different. That's the only thing I can tell you. Okay. And they collect the honey, they collect the nectar too from the, everybody that they put flowers in the yard. They go, Classic a lot of song. people come here, that's what they, a lot of people started because I teach them. They come here and watch me and they ask me questions and I tell them. Who would even learn how to do this? I mean, it has to be like, they have to go to somebody like you because I can't see somebody reading a book and learning how to do this, right? First of all, you cannot be afraid of the bees because like you're me. afraid they know it. <laughs> the one that I know mostly about the bee is to keep the eye iron on it and try to keep the hive clean and take care of the bees. If you see any problem, huh? you, if you see uh, you protect it from the, from the environment as possible. In the winter, you gotta keep it for the ventilator so they don't, so they don't have the moisture inside. Moisture kills a lot of bees, so then they, they go out. Also, they drink water. That's why my father has a water fountain. Oh, I think I get a shot of that. So they, that, I put it there so they don't have to go far and get it. They can come closer. They can produce more honey instead of going for the, the group going for the for for, bee, for water, they can go out for for, for nectar. Okay. I fill it up once a week, once a day. You see, it's going down already. So that's not tap water. Close to the Delaware River. Okay. Because if you put the the water from here, it becomes to be the calcium. They put whatever they put is all white. Mm -hmm. My honey is 100% honey. Anybody who wants to buy honey. And they want honey, they have to come here. If they come to the store, it's up to them. What do, they, what do other people mix it with that you don't? What, what do they, other people do? Well, they, I believe they use the molasses. Mm -hmm. 